1929 and the era of sound. Until Kinograph Pictures cut all production of silent flicks. But oh dear, it's in direct competition with Peppy's latest talkie. Though careless talk is just as dangerous, if you don't know who's listening. But Peppy liked it. Meanwhile, her own film is a massive hit. Meanwhile, it's all about Peppy Miller. paper is no way to find out. And Peppy takes him in. Now why would she do that? Maybe she feels guilty for her careless words in the interview. Maybe because he showed her kindness in her rise to fame, and she wanted to return the favour. But most probably, because she's a decent human being, and she loved his films. And of course, she still believes that he's a big star. Even if the bosses don't. <laughs> But Peppy is just in time to save her idol from a terrible mistake. And she's got the perfect idea to reintroduce George Valentine to audiences. And the last word goes to Monsieur George Valentine. Take us home, George. With pleasure. <laughs> hey folks. Yeah, been absent for most of this one but you seem to have been getting along fine without me. Anyway, just popping in to deliver the moral of the story. 
which is twofold. Firstly, that it isn't about the technology, but rather how you use it. And secondly, sometimes you just have to swallow your pride and use your words. So thanks to MicroMe and Mr. Blue Text for filling in for most of the episode. And all that remains for me to say is that that was the artist. And actually, I'm going to put this one into my house of love. A silent movie? In 2011? Yep. Intertitles, black and white, 4-3 aspect, the whole deal. Brilliant for film historians or fans of Hollywood nostalgia. And it certainly gives prestige to this French picture. Yes, the artist was directed by a Frenchman, and both the leads were Gallic too. But let's get to the performances, much as we can. And without the aid of dialogue, you have to be on your game. Thankfully, Jean Dujardin and Berenice Bejeau are strong performers, and their emotions show through. And the supporting cast features John Goodman and James Cromwell, who also put the business into their roles. Goodman, the old-style level-headed producer, Cromwell, the faithful manservant. Much less Penelope Ann Miller as Mrs. Valentine, but that's only because she gets very little screen time. And while there are a few visual effects here, they're mostly to replace costly camera tricks. Which brings us to the score. Ludovic Bossa brings a heavily melodramatic yet surprisingly moving at points score for this movie. Though some of the dramatic movements wouldn't be out of place in a comic book movie, and much as I'm no fan of melodramas, or the basic plot of the proud man who falls from grace and alienates everyone until the final shocking moment where he just gets over himself, the pill is very much sweetened by the silent era style, with intertitles, optical fades, and even the 4-3 aspect ratio. If I had to pick a flaw, for me, the biggest failing of any silent movie is the need for intertitles. If you're going to have dialogue, then dialogue works best in sound, at least in my opinion. Thankfully, the important dialogue is kept to a minimum, and only necessary intertitles are shown. In summary then, The Artist is a love letter to a bygone era, a cautionary tale about pride coming before a fall, and just a damn good example of physical filmmaking. And it did win a bunch of awards as well, so you know, there's that. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks! Hey folks, Funky again. 
If you liked the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!